super excited. Why? Because I get to meet you and you get to meet me. I've been dreaming of this day for God knows how I see you. You. Yes, you. Don't no, don't look behind. I see you. <laughs> yes, I'm so happy I finally get to meet you. And you know what? For all my viewers, everyone who's been following me on Facebook, Instagram, I call you guys royals because I really do believe that there's a king and a queen on the inside of every single one of us. First Peter 2 9 says, for we are we are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That simply means that we're special, we're chosen, we're different. And really, the genes of our Father, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, flows in us and through us. So guess what? You are a king and you are a queen. So today, I have something special for us because Christmas is around the corner. Christmas time is here again. Yes, Christmas is almost here and the Lord laid something in my heart to share with you that is so special and so dear to my heart. Um, every single one of us I'm sure have dreams. We all have dreams, we all have visions, we all have aspirations. And this video um, today is just here to trigger and to motivate you to take the right step in the right direction towards fulfilling those dreams. Um, it's for everyone pregnant with this vision. It's for everyone that's carrying a dream. It's for every vision bearer and everyone pregnant, ready for something new. Um, thank you for spending time, you know, with me, for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with Queen D. And I'm sure you're not going to regret this. So why don't you follow me to my little cozy corner and let's dig in. Come on. Hello Royals, thank you so much for coming to our cozy spot. Um, I'm going to be sharing with us eight Christmas lessons that I think will bless you. I was reading from the book of Matthew chapter 1 and 2 and I got eight points that I really, really believe will bless you. So because of time, I won't be able to read through the whole passage, but I'll give you the verses and just go straight to the point so that you get the main message. All right, so um, Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 downwards it tells us about how you know Joseph and Mary plan on getting married and um, Mary supernaturally gets pregnant becomes pregnant by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and then Joseph plans on putting her away privately you know because he's like I'm not the father of this baby I don't want to you know I don't want people to think you know get the wrong message so he plans on putting her away and in verse 20 it says as he considered this an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the dream Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now that shows that Joseph became afraid at some point. You know, like, I don't get this, I don't understand this. And that brings me to my first point. No matter how big or scary your vision is, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to go on with what God has spoken to your heart to do. If he gave the vision, he will surely make provision and bring it to pass. You know, if he chose you for the assignment, it's because he, he knows or, he, you know, he knows you can do it. So don't be afraid, you know. Our second Christmas lesson is as seen in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. It says, She will bear a son, speaking of Mary, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I believe it's important for us to write on our vision and make it clear so that others may understand and even we may understand what is the Lord telling you to do? What is that dream you have? What is that vision? What is that dream that you want to birth? You have to give it a name. Do you want to be the greatest sing the greatest um, singer, entertainer, um, sportsman, you know, mother, businesswoman, businessman, whatever. You have to give it a name. You have to know what it is. Our third Christmas lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 2 verse 7 and it says Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, he inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. I believe that there is a star in each and every one of us. You can never be afraid to fly because the sky is big enough for each and every star to abide. Stay focused on developing yourself and feeding your vision with the right words and actions. Before you know it, kings will be coming to spy you out. How awesome would that be for governors and presidents and great men and women of the land to come and ask us and solicit from us because of how wise we are or how well we've been able to develop ourselves? You have to believe in yourself. Speak right words. Feed your visions with the right word. Feed your dreams with the right words. 
okay? Our fourth Christmas lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 2 verse 8 and it says, And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come to worship him also. You notice the word diligently was used both in verse 7 and verse 8 if you're using the King James Version. Of course you know that um, wise men were very knowledgeable people. They equally did not go about wasting their time, but they engaged in a diligent search for the star of baby Jesus. It is important that we take time out to diligently seek out the potentials and the gifts that are on the inside of us. What are those talents? What can you do? Bring them out, polish them, nurture them, develop them. You know, engage in a diligent search to find out who you really are and what you can really do. Until we can discover our true worth, people will not come to seek us out. Now imagine I said I had front row tickets to go to this amazing concert or conference or anything um, and afterwards you would get to go backstage to meet with a person, you know, a person who you love and um, after that you would get to go have dinner with them for about two hours. Now close your eyes and think who would I really want to spend that evening with? Who would I want to get backstage tickets to go see? I'm pretty sure that someone came up in your mind. Why would you spend time wanting to go meet with that person? Because in some way they've influenced you, they've inspired you, you know, and you're, you, you know, they've taken time out to develop themselves and you see something in their lives that you admire. Same thing with you. People want to come and spy you out. People want to come and spend time with you, but you have to spend time to develop yourself and know exactly what it is that you're called to do. So that brings us to our fifth point. If you read further um, in the story about the birth of Jesus, you'll find out that the wise men, they did find the babe, they did find Jesus but they never return to Herod. And so he gets angry and he commands that all the children um, of, from age two and below be killed. But thankfully, you know, the Lord sent an angel to Joseph and told him to take, you know, Mary and baby Jesus and leave um, where they were. So in verse 19 and 20, it says, um, when Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Get up. The angel said, Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph leaves and um, returns. He leaves Egypt and he returns back to Israel. And um, that tells us our fifth point is that God will always give you instructions to secure your destiny and your vision. He will never let your, your vision be destroyed. He will never let that dream be killed. And our sixth point, um, according to what I wrote in my blog post, is that every vision conceived by the Holy Spirit is an unstoppable vision. King Herod tried to kill you know, the baby Jesus, but he failed in destroying him. The Holy Spirit is like a traffic conductor. Follow his leading and you will not crash. And that is so true. The, the Holy Spirit will lead you, you know, what steps to take, He'll lead you on where to go, He'll lead you on um, what to do in order for that vision, that dream you have to blossom and to flourish. And um, that leads us to our seventh point. Um, and that was inspired from Matthew chapter 2 verse 10 and it says, The wise men rejoiced with exceeding great joy when they found the star, baby Jesus himself. Your vision will always bring betterment, excitement, health, and advancement to the lives of many and to the world at large, as well as promotion to your own life. Jesus went about doing good, and today he's a global transgenerational phenomenon. I'm sure in our own day and age, we can thank God for, you know, the rise of social media. We can thank God for um, social platforms such as Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, you know, and other things like that. Those were all visions that were birthed by other great men, that were birthed by other people. So what vision do you have? What vision and what do you have that you can add to make this world a better place? Jesus brought excitement. He brought advancement. He brought joy. He brought good tidings, you know? So our visions and our dreams will always bring betterment and advancement to the world at large. And so royals. This brings me to our eighth point. Mary was pregnant with the one who would save humanity and forever change the world. So my question to you today is, what are you pregnant with? What is that dream? What is that vision that you have? What is that baby that you're carrying on the inside of you? It would be so fatal if Christmas time comes and goes and we don't give life to that dream of that baby. 
The essence of Christ was to bring hope to the world and give back life to the lost, to dead dreams, to dead works. God has been tugging and pulling at your heart to do something. There is a dream of vision that you have. You've been running. Some of you have been running, I know, but some of you haven't. For those who have been running and have grown weary, don't give up the hope. Don't give up the fight. Keep the hope alive. Have faith. Some of you feel, I don't know what I'm called to do. Why am I placed on this earth? We're going to be praying in a minute. And I'm going to be trusting that the Lord will speak to your hearts and open your eyes to see what it is he has called you to do. What has he created you to do? He's going to be revealing that to you. Let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your children. Thank you for your sons and your daughters who are watching this video. Lord God, you said the words, oh Lord God, that are written in your word are spirit and they are life. Lord, even as we've shared together, Lord God, from your word, I pray, Lord Jesus, that life be injected, oh Lord God, into the lives of your precious children, oh Lord God. For that man or woman, for that girl or boy, oh God, who feels like they don't know what their purpose is, why they've been placed on this earth, visit them, Lord Jesus. Open their eyes to see and their ears to hear, oh God, what you are saying and what you are speaking into their lives, oh God. Father, Lord Jesus, for the man or woman who's growing weary they've been trying and trying to to, to 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 move up they've been trying and trying oh lord god to give expression to that dream but they seem to be experiencing closed doors i pray lord jesus that the doors begin to open on their behalf right now in the name of jesus god said help us to them oh god you said ask and you shall receive lord we ask for your divine help oh lord god right now oh god Father, Lord Jesus, speak to your children. Make a way out of no way, Lord God. And even in this season of Christmas, oh God, visit them, oh Lord God. Give them hope, oh God. Keep their faiths alive in the name of Jesus. Give them a new song to sing, oh God, and give them a new testimony in the name of Jesus. I'm going to keep you in my prayers, and I'm going to trust that the Lord will help you and open your eyes to see exactly what it is that he wants you to do, where he's called you to be, what he's called you to do, and what your assignment is. Thank you once again for spending time with me. I know we spent quite a bit. I really appreciate you. You have placed a very big smile on my face, and um, I love you so much. Merry, merry, merry Christmas, Royals, and even in the season, you know, of merriment and jollification, I pray that even as we jollificate we still remember to replicate christ keep the hope alive because that is this jesus is the reason for the season and that is the essence of christmas you can keep up with queen d all over social media the link should be scrolling just down below and please 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 do visit my website www.queendee.com.ng something great awaits you there i love you enjoy Mwah.